Alright, so I gotta talk about Revelation 20. This just almost as much as anything burns my tail. Alright, so what you'll notice here if you do a search Revelation 20 um, you probably have to open up one of these here um, I opened up several several of these and you'll notice here as you go one by one by one we are introduced to judges that will rule with Christ. Okay, so that's wow. I, all these guys, they got it. They all got it wrong. Every single one of them are wrong. They're not going by the Bible. I've, I've put a lot of thought into this. They're not going by the Bible at all. They're going by what somebody else taught. Right. Oops, I don't want to. I apologize for that. They're going by something that's been taught in the churches or whatever. They're not going by the Bible. Because for one thing, you'll notice that the Revelation 20 makes no mention at all of Jesus reigning for a thousand years. There's no suggestion of it anywhere. And it's certainly not in Revelation 20. No mention of him reigning a thousand years. No suggestion, no hint, no nothing. Why are all these people getting it wrong? I mean, every single one of these guys. They're all wrong. They ain't nobody got it right. Alright. You could argue that some of them are evasive and some, some of them are bold. Okay. But the bottom line is no, this should be something that's called out should be something that's taught and shown and corrected. So the, the Millennial Kingdom, there is no Millennial Kingdom at all. That's not in the Bible. But when you hear people talk about it enough, you think, well, it must be. The Millennial Reign of Christ, not in the Bible. So it's not there in Revelation 20, verse 1 through 6. It's not anywhere in the Bible. It's not even suggested, not even a hint of it. So how is it that these guys are all getting it wrong? It's unbelievable, really. So I'm going to show you something here. Um, first of all, you'll know, <laughs> i got to point this out in case you're new. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So it's not Jesus reigning a thousand years. It's us believers reigning with Christ. In this time period right now, until his return, and his return is verse 11. You can't have Jesus returning, but it doesn't even say he returns, right? You just, oh, he must be here. He never came back. He never came back, but he must be back. <clears throat> and then he comes back again. There's no logic into what these guys are teaching. So this is why I, I have to believe that they are only going by what they've been taught by people that didn't understand it. And they're all clinging to the same um, bad teaching, at best, false teaching. Okay, and so if you go to Revelation 1, verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now, something to keep to notice here. Something you got, it's very important. Without this, man. 
this word right there, that tells it all. That one word tells it all. So you got the word sh uh, show, okay, and then you got sin signified it by his angel. Okay, so the angels are going to show John. They're going to show John these visions. So we go to Revelation 20, and I saw an angel come down. So John seen an angel come down. So the angel is going to show him something. All right, so you see this numerous times in Revelation. It's unbelievable. How do you miss that? It's unbelievable, in my opinion. So <clears throat> I want to show you something that is even crazy, even crazier than all this stuff here. Okay. Randy Roth. Let's see. The dead reign with Christ. Okay, so. Alright, so the dead reign with Christ. Don't worry, I'll go back to that. The rest of the dead lived not again. I saw the dead. And the dead, and the dead, and the dead. So. This is after Jesus comes. You got one mention of the dead right here, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. So to hell with the truth. I'm going to make up something that just makes no sense at all and has no base in logic whatsoever. And I'm going to comment and counter what I said. All right, and so basically, that's what I say. Right now, we reign with Christ now. We are priests of God now, and that's backed up by Scripture. And so, his response is, the dead reign with Christ. So, I'm guessing this guy's watched too many zombie movies. How in the world, if dead people are reigning with Christ, then Christ must be a zombie. All right, so the zombie Christ is coming, and for a thousand years, there's going to be zombies running around. It's mind-boggling, really. It's as if people aren't putting any thought into this at all. The dead are reigning. They're running around for a thousand years. Reigning. It doesn't make any sense. And then what happens when Jesus does return? So what do you have, two different Christs here? Because the suggestion is this is after the return of Christ, which it's not. This is the return of Christ in verse 11, and we see the judgment. All right, and you can go confirm this all throughout the Bible. But let me make this simple so you can see it for yourself. All right? Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. The great, the great white throne and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw dead I saw the dead, small, and great stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of the, those things which were written in the books, according to the works, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell were delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. Okay, so this is obviously Judgment Day, all right? Judgment Day. No question about it. 
And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. This is the judgment. It's the same judgment. It's not a different judgment. It's the same judgment. All right, and then Jesus starts to uh, talk, uh, you know, share some parables. But this was all stems back from this question: What shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? So this judgment that's coming is the end of the world. All right, just like we read here in Revelation twenty. Starting at verse 11, this is the end of the world. All right, the, yeah, all you have to do is connect the dots. All right, it's unbelievable. This stuff here is giving you an idea of what's going on right now. So they shall be priests and kings of God and shall reign with him a thousand years. All you have to do is look at that word priest. They shall be priests of God, and just read the Bible. That's really all you have to do, but let's take, I like, make it simple. All right. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ. Okay. Verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him that has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. We are a priesthood. We are priests of God and of Christ. We are a holy nation. What are you reading here, man? They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Why a thousand years? Because at the end of the thousand years, we are resurrected into our incorruptible flesh. We are sown in corruption and reaped in Uh, in corruption, what I say, we are sown in corruption and reaped in in corruption. I mean, here, I better. I feel like I didn't say that right. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. All right. So <laughs> it, this thing is being taught all throughout the Bible, everywhere, and. There's no such hint of a thousand year period of time after Jesus returns because it's just not there. It's just not there. You guys are getting this from something outside of the Bible. And so this, I think I've gone long enough, but I, I don't think there's, there's nobody. There's nobody getting this right. It's unbelievable. And he that sat upon a throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So when Jesus comes, he's going to make all things new. When he comes, it is judgment time. He's making all things new. It's the end of the world. There is no thousand year period of his you know, like his kingdom, which is what you're seeing all throughout. Uh, you know, everybody here, all these people are teaching the same thing. Nobody's got it right. Nobody is getting it right. It's unbelievable. They're all wrong.